Welcome to the Routing Services for ArcGIS webinar. My name is Maria Lomoro and I'm in Product Marketing here at Esri. I am here with Scott Sandusky, Esri Product Manager for Network Analysis Services and responsible for ensuring that Esri's routing products meet customer requirements. Also joining us is Kurt Towler, GIS Coordinator at Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative in Sierra Vista, Arizona. Kurt has over 14 years of experience working with GIS and the electric utility industry. We are going to spend the next 30 minutes showing you what you can do with ArcGIS Online Routing Services. We'll start with Scott, who will give you a brief overview, and then Kurt is going to show how he has used the services to solve a business problem involving travel costs to frequently visited locations. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Scott. Thanks, Maria. Hi. I'm Scott with the Esri Network Analysis team. Traditionally, routing and network analysis are probably performed in ArcMap with a network analyst extension. To do this, you need a transportation network data set from a commercial data provider, or you need to maintain your own routable street network. Today, we have another option. Using web services, network analysis capabilities can be accessed through the web by connecting to ArcGIS Online. Anyone with an ArcGIS Online account can simply connect to these cloud services. That connection can be made in any ArcGIS application, whether it's in desktop, a web app, or on a mobile device. Network analysis includes simple point-to-point -point routing, but it also includes complex optimization for multiple vehicles and allows us to strategically locate a facility or create drive time areas. All of these solvers or routing algorithms are time aware, meaning that the analysis considers live traffic conditions as well as historic traffic patterns for more accurate predictive results. These solvers are intelligent. They have advanced trucking restrictions that support commercial requirements. These aren't just consumer level routing. They're smart enough to know which side of the street a vehicle needs to arrive at and if the vehicle height, weight, and length restrictions should be applied. And these are things that somebody driving a car might not necessarily need, but are critically needed in commercial applications. So how would we actually use these services? Well, in ArcGIS Desktop, you will automatically connect to ready-to-use services when signed in to ArcGIS Online. Notice here that under my ready-to-use services connection, I have a set of log logistics toolboxes as well as a live traffic map available to me. Now these toolboxes act just like any normal geoprocessing tool. We also have routing analysis tools available directly in the ArcGIS.com map viewer. Here you'll find a really streamlined and intuitive interface for working with these services. I'm really happy to have Kurt with us today to show us how he used ArcGIS Online to perform some routing analysis at Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. Kurt, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Scott. Hi, everyone. I'm Kurt from Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. We provide electricity in southeastern Arizona to around 52,000 homes, businesses, and farms. Although we are in a rural part of Arizona, we actively serve an area the size of Connecticut. In the high desert, we have many mountain ranges and the old west mining towns of Tombstone and Bisbee. We also have very modern areas, including a high-tech army installation and a growing urban population. We use GIS as the main tool to manage all of our electric facilities, including poles, transformers, and meters at the point of service. Since about two-thirds of our employees use GIS to help make better decisions, we are always looking for new ways to use the tools that ESRI has introduced. For the next few minutes, I'm going to describe how we use Dark GIS Online to solve a new business problem which is a study to determine the travel costs to and from the locations we have to frequently visit. On this map, we can see the geographic distribution of our metered service locations. Layered on top are the dispatch offices, from which the personnel install and maintain those meters. With automated meter reading technology, we no longer have to visit all of these locations every month. However, there are many instances where a field trip to the meter is still required. When a consumer moves out of the home, for instance, we have to dispatch a meter person to disconnect the power. Or when a person moves in, another trip is required to connect the power. 
To provide good customer service, we will drive to any of these locations as needed. Depending on the workload, it is easy to drive over 100, even 200 miles per day. As part of the U.S. Smart Grid program, SSVC participates in grant funding to implement new technologies that improve customer service. We were looking for ways to improve the response time to turning the power on or off to individual meters. Here is a picture of a meter collar that slips underneath our existing meters. These collars provide the customer service representatives the ability to turn the power on while talking to the consumer. No field trip is required. This technology is supporting a new business practice, prepaid metering. Instead of paying for service after the electricity is consumed, the consumer puts money on deposit and uses it until it needs to be re-upped. We think it will be popular with winter residents and people who want to closely watch their electricity consumption. We thought this would be a good project to estimate some return on investment. We decided to focus on those meters where frequent visits were required. This map shows our high volume trips. We sampled all locations where we made trips at least once per year in three years. In fact, there were many locations, like rental properties, where many more trips had been made. How many miles have been driven to and from these locations, and how much time has been spent on the road? We know the start point and the end point, but not the distance or time it takes to get there. With over 5,000 locations, this seemed like a very heavy data analysis, and I said to my manager at the time, let me have a couple weeks to think about this. These questions came up about a month after the Esri user conference in July. I had seen the plenary session and knew that routing services had been added to ArcGIS Online. I thought we could do this using the cloud, but I didn't know that in just an afternoon of work, I could provide a very concise answer to these questions. So what are the steps? Here's a workflow that I used. Once the sample data was uploaded, I ran the task that delivers the shortest driving route. It ran so quickly that I immediately increased the data set in size. For each point destination, a one-way route had been turned into a line feature. In less than an hour, I had several thousand line features, each with attributes for the amount of time it takes to travel and the distance. The line feature allows me to anecdotally compare the computer route with our own experiences. This analysis was all kicked off from the web browser. Once I downloaded the features back to the office, I was able to do further analysis from ArcGIS desktop and turn the tabular data into Excel pivot reports. The only glitch in the process was my internet connection. That day, there was a major internet outage in our area, and it happened while the analysis was actively running in the cloud. ArcGIS Online still worked. I just needed a working internet connection. I went home where the internet was still connected, logged in, and finished the analysis in the web browser. Let's take a look at how this works for us. Here we can see the frequently dispatched locations in the central dispatch office. I have several locations and I want to find the optimal path with the shortest drive time. I'm going to start with the destination layer. This is a set of features on which I want to run my analysis. The little drop down arrow shows me options, including layer display, map behavior, and other actions that are layer specific. From here, I can choose the Perform Analysis option. These are the different kinds of analyses that I can perform in the destination layer. I can expand these to see the different tools. And pop-ups give me a clearer idea of what to expect from the tools. Once I choose the Find Nearest tool, I can select my options. I only have one dispatch office here, but I could use multiple offices and it would determine the nearest one. Driving time optimizes my path and allows traffic integration. Once I change the layer name, I'm ready to click Run. This is a sample set, so it does not take very long to run. Larger data sets can take a little bit longer, but I was pleasantly surprised that I could run over 1,000 records in just a few minutes. There are some record limits, but that can be worked around by breaking up the larger data sets. Now we can see that the analysis is complete and the result has been displayed in the map, and it lives on as a map service. I can manage the display just as I can with any other map service.
When I select a line on the map, we can see the attributes that have been added that I'll need for my business calculation. Here we can see the total minutes and total number of miles. Since I'm interested in summary statistics, let's see how a table looks. As I open the table, here are my driving distance and time measurements. If I look at the table statistics, I can see how the sum or average starts to look for my information. This is where I'll start to get meaningful results from the production data. When I'm happy with how that looks, I can start to think about how to work with production data. But first, I want to get it back into the office. Under the Perform Analysis and Manage Data options, we can use the Extract Data tool to download that data and bring it back into the enterprise. This was only a small set of information, but how does it look when we get over a thousand records? Here we can see the scope of all the points, and we can start to see all the multitude of lines that are showing on the map. This is a lot of information, and it shows a lot of potential for further rich data analysis that I can bring back to my business users. And let's switch back to the presentation and see what the results of the study showed. So ArcGIS Online turned those initial locations into a very good estimate of the miles driven and hours on the road. As an electric utility, we are responsible for the safe operation of our electric network, including meters, so driving doesn't bother us. However, this shows that in aggregate, we have spent a lot of hours on the road just for this one activity. So using this new meter collar to remotely disconnect or connect the power, many of these trips can be avoided. So this is information about how we worked in the past. It really shows business potential, and it is only one data point in this entire conversation about how to administer our new program. It is possible that these new collars will pay for themselves based on labor and fuel costs spread out over several years. In a couple years, I would like to use the same service to look at where we actually installed these meters and how many trips we avoided. We can use this to evaluate our progress towards our goals. For that kind of reporting, we can provide a true number of avoided costs. Even though we are a small utility in Southern Arizona, there are huge cost savings that can be identified and that helps keep the cost of service down for all of our members. Since doing this analysis, we've identified a couple other ways we can use these tools. There's Python scripting, and I think we'll be able to incorporate that into our construction cost estimates and make a positive GIS impact every day. With that, I'm going to hand the presentation back to Scott. Thanks, Scott. That, that was really great, Kurt. Thanks. You know, I, I think a lot of people can really relate to your challenge and have similar real-world problems. You know, that analysis and that study, that, that can have a huge impact on the bottom line, and it's helping to make critical decisions. So we, we can definitely learn from what you did here. You know, just to summarize, he started with that business data, and that was the frequently visited meters. Just by clicking on that layer, he exposed the analysis tools, and then by running the find nearest tool, came up with the route costing estimates. And those costing estimates saved dollars to prove an ROI for installing those meters. And that was all in the ArcGIS Online Map Viewer. Next, I'd like to just switch gears here for a minute and talk a little bit about how these routing services are used in desktop. Many of you may be seasoned desktop professionals and spend a lot of time in ArcMap and want to use this content in there too. Well, here I have an ArcMap project containing regional office locations and work orders that need to be performed in the field. The office locations are displayed as larger colored circles and the individual work orders are shown as small black points. And this type of situation applies to anyone that has several offices and performs some type of field activity inspections, repairs, surveys, maybe customer visits. But the challenge here 
is how to assign all of this field work most appropriately to those offices. How would we do that? Well, the network analysis tool, Location Allocation, solves this problem. When I sign into the ArcGIS Online account, I gain access to these premium network analysis services. Notice that now that I'm signed in, in our catalog, I have these ready to use services in a folder connection. Anyone with ArcMap version 10.2 or higher automatically connects to these services when they are logged in. Here, in my logistics folder, this is where I gain access to the ArcGIS Online network analysis services. Now, if you have ArcMap version 10.0 or 10.1, you can connect to these services manually by creating a GIS server connection, just like I did here. Just pass in the logistics URL, logistics.arcgis.com, with, with an ArcGIS Online organizational account login. Okay, so let's get back to my problem. I need to assign my field work orders to the closest office based on a route distance. To do this, we'll use the location allocation service. In this case, my facilities are my office locations, my demand points are my work orders. For my problem type, I'm going to minimize my, the impedance. This means basically I'm minimizing the travel distance between all work locations and offices. And I'm going to do this for all 17 office facilities. Now, if I have any questions about these input settings, the help file to the side here is here for me to reference. OK. So now that this problem is sent to ArcGIS Online, it's sent with my input data and my settings. And we'll return a result here in a minute. If I want to continue working in desktop, I can do that. Or I can keep an eye on my process through this results window. Here's my inputs, my environmental settings, and messages about my web, my web request. So now, with the results here, we have an assignment of each work order to the appropriate field office based off of the shortest drive distance. Our result is a demand point layer of work orders, facilities layer of offices, and an assignment indicated by lines connecting the two. This solves my original problem. Now I know exactly which work orders are assigned to each office. And this is done in the least cost assignment plan. The location allocation tool can help us make other decisions. For example, if we need to close an office, it, it will tell us which one will have the least impact. This is an example of how we can use the ArcGIS Online directions and routing services in desktop. They're access accessible here in the ready to use services, right in your catalog window, and others like closest facility, service area, and vehicle routing problem are also available. With the March release, route will be added to this list. So far, we've seen how we can use the routing services in ArcGIS Online Map Viewer and in Desktop. Now, let's take a minute to understand where each of these services is available in those two applications. Along the top here, we have all the routing services available to us. On the left, we have the two applications, the ArcGIS Online Map Viewer and ArcGIS Desktop. Let's start with the Map Viewer. Within the Map Viewer, the Route service is available in the Directions tool. In March, we are adding a Connect Origins to Destinations analysis tool as well. Next to that, the Closest Facility service can be found in the Find Nearest analysis tool. And the Service Area service is available in the Create Drive Times tool. 
With our March release, we will be adding a new plan routes tool that uses that vehicle route service. We currently don't have a location allocation tool planned for the map viewer, and of course, you can add that traffic layer to any ArcGIS Online map. Let's go down to desktop next. With ready to use services, we're adding that route option in March. By the way, that route service can also be used in the Find Routes tool on the Tools toolbar. All the other services are now available in desktop, and it's important to note that the location allocation service, that's currently now in beta. One of the goals we have is to provide network analysis services globally. Currently, we provide directions in 17 different languages. We perform routing in over 145 countries. 101 of these countries contain detailed, low-level street networks. Traffic data is contained in 77 countries, and we are continuing to add global authoritative content with each release cycle. We've really spent a lot of time and effort and resources making sure that this content is accurate, and we work with our distributors and data partners like Navtech. Okay, so in summary, these services are accessible. They're in the ArcGIS.com map viewer, they're in ArcGIS desktop. All ArcMap users have an ArcGIS Online subscription already. So if you have ArcMap, you can connect to these services now. They're ready to use with no need for an extension, don't need to manage the transportation network data, and they use that best available content. They're global in coverage. For more information, I'd recommend visiting route.arcgis.com, and I really urge you to try this out. Lastly, I'd think, like to thank our guest, Kurt Toller, for his great demonstration. Thank you. We hope you found what you learned and saw today useful. If you'd like to get in touch with Scott to schedule a private demo or get some of your questions answered, you can reach Scott at ssandusky at esri.com. If you'd like to learn more about how Kurt is using ArcGIS Online or what he showed you today, you can contact Kurt at k Towler at ssvec.com. And if you don't have an ArcGIS Online subscription and would like to try this for yourself, you can sign up for a free 30-day trial at esri.com forward slash agol eval.